Hi, and welcome back to another video. As promised, the next few videos are going to be all about assembly code, including machine code, some general constructs for making bigger programs, and a look at a commercial instruction set architecture. In this video, we're going to look at the simple instruction set that we use to build the Hex8 machine in Minecraft. We'll review the instructions and see how they're implemented. In the second video, we'll look at some simple programs to get a better understanding of why we have certain instructions and not others. In the third video, we'll look at general constructs we can use for building larger programs and we'll see some examples of bigger programs in the fourth video. In the fifth and final video, we'll use our understanding to look at the ARM instruction set architecture. This is the architecture used in almost all phones, tablets, and many IoT and other embedded devices. So let's get started. Our simple instruction set has 16 instructions. We'll start with the simplest two, LDAC and LDBC. LD means load and is a common abbreviation in many architectures. A and B refer to the registers we're going to load with a value. Lastly, C means constant. A constant simply means a fixed number that is included as part of the instruction. So overall, we read these instructions as load the A register with a constant and load the B register with a constant. Let's remind ourselves of how these instructions are encoded. As a simple 8-bit machine, each instruction is encoded in 8 bits, otherwise known as a byte. The top 4 bits encode which instruction it is. This is the opcode. For instance, in the instruction LDAC, it's encoded as 0011 or 3 in decimal. The bottom 4 bits are used to hold the constant value for the instruction. This is, gives us a range of 0 to 15 or minus 8 to 7 for the constant. In the simulation on the right, we can see what happens when we execute the instruction shown on the left. LDAC5, it has loaded the A register with the number 5. LDAC5 is an example of a single assembly code instruction. Sometimes you'll hear people talk about machine code. Technically, machine code refers to the encoded form of the instruction. In this example, the machine code would be 35 in hexadecimal. The 3 represents the LDAC instruction, the high 4 bits, and the 5 represents the constant number 5 in the low 4 bits. In all architectures, we have an assembly code, which is the text representation of the instructions. This gives us some flexibility too, as we'll see in a moment. We can use pseudo instructions to represent instructions which expand into multiple machine code instructions. Each architecture has an encoding which explains how to translate assembly code into fully encoded binary machine code. Okay, so we can load small numbers, but our machine's registers are 8-bit, so it'd be good if we had a way to load the full 8-bit constants into the A or B registers. This is what the prefix instruction enables. Our machine has an 8-bit special purpose operand register we use to hold constant values from the instructions. The prefix instruction, instruction number 15, loads its 4-bit constant value into the top 4 bits of the operand register. Other instructions load their 4-bit constants into the bottom 4 bits. So the assembly code instruction LDAC18 would be encoded in two machine instructions, which we can also write out as assembly code. The top four bits of the operand register are set to 1 by the prefix. Looking at the full 8-bit number, this means the operand register now holds the value 16. The LDAC instruction first sets the bottom four bits of the operand register. This means the operand register now holds 16 plus 2, which is 18. The instruction then sets the A register to the value of the operand register, and thus overall, loading the A register with the constant value 18. The same thing goes for the LDBC instruction. That's quite a lot going on just for two simple instructions. Fortunately, the whole point of an instruction set architecture, and thus its assembly code, is that it abstracts away from some of the details of how the hardware works. For the rest of this video, we're just going to focus on the functional effect of these instructions. In other words, what the simulator shows them doing. If you want to know how each instruction works in real hardware, please watch my previous series on implementing this 8-bit computer in Minecraft. The next easiest instructions are add and sub. These behave as follows. Add loads the A register with the value of A register plus B register. Sub loads the A register with the value of A register minus B register. There is a similar instruction for working with the program counter. 
LDAP. Loads the A register with the value of PC register plus the instructions constant value. Next we have the load memory instructions. LDAM loads the A register with the value in memory addressed by the O register. LDBM loads the B register with the value in memory addressed by the O register. LDAI loads the A register with the value in memory addressed by A register plus O register. And LDBI does a similar thing loading the B register with the value in memory addressed by the B register plus the O register. The first type of memory loads are known as constant or direct memory loads. They always load from the same address, which, mean, which is encoded in the instruction. We read them as load A register from memory and load B register from memory. The second type of memory loads are known as index memory loads. They load from an offset of the value in A register or B register. In other words, we can use A or B as pointers into the memory and the constant value in the instructions as an index or an offset from those pointers. The counterpart to these instructions are the store instructions. STAM store the A register into memory at the address of O register. STAI store A register into memory at the address held in B register plus O register. Notice that we can only store A register into memory. The instructions don't allow for storing the B register into memory. This is a design choice. The instruction set can only have 16 instructions, so we can't have every possible variation of each instruction. By understanding more about how we build programs, we can understand which variants of instructions we need and which ones we can go without. In a future series, I'll dive into explaining these design choices in more detail. In this series, I'm just going to try and help you understand and use assembly code so we can think about it more in future videos. The other thing to notice is that STAI uses three registers. It uses A as the value to store into memory and B and O as the address. We could have used A as the base pointer, but this would mean we'd always be storing A into memory and using A as the base address. That would be significantly less flexible. Branch instructions. BR loads the PC register with the PC register plus O reg. We read this as branch, and it simply allows us to add to the program counter so we can move to other parts of the program. It is known as a relative branch instruction because where we move to is relative to where we started, i.e. the O register provides an offset from our current position in the program. This branch instruction is slightly underspecified though. We also need to know that the PC is incremented before the PC plus O reg calculation is performed. This is quite common. The ARM architecture does the same thing of incrementing the program counter before executing the instruction. Our other branch instructions are BRB, which loads the PC register with the value in B register. This is read as branch to B and is known as an absolute branch instruction because it branches to the address given by the value in the B register. It's a complete replacement of the PC rather than an offset from the PC. Finally, we have conditional relative branch instructions. BRZ, if A reg is zero, then load the PC register with the PC plus O register, else do nothing. And BRN, if A register is less than zero, then perform a relative branch, otherwise do nothing. These are read as branch if zero and branch if negative. That's all 16 of our instructions. In the next video, we'll look at some simple programs that make full use of this instruction set, and we'll run those programs through the simulator to see them work. So thanks for watching. As ever, hit like, uh, hit subscribe and the bell notification icon thingy uh, so you get notified when I post more videos in the future. Um, if you like the video a lot, please share it with friends. I'm trying to grow the number of subscribers I have. Uh, so yeah, just share it with anyone that you think might be interested.